lighthearted program created by Rio Grande. Attention, police calling all cars. Attention, all cars. Broadcast 185 regarding a shooting at 310 Marches Hall Street. That's all. Rolls and clips. Nothing can stop the march of progress of definitely superior products. Tomorrow, hundreds of you who have known Rio Grande only through the friendly medium of calling all cars will begin to buy Rio Grande cracked gasoline and Sinclair motor oils from your independent Rio Grande dealer. We know this because it has happened every week for the 184 weeks calling all cars has been invited into your home. It has been responsible for cracked gasoline having a greater percentage of sales increase for over two years than any other gasoline. This fact has been a constant source of satisfaction to me as your narrator and announcer, for we who know the fact of cracked gasoline's superior performance and know that we have presented the most conclusive proof of quality ever presented to Western motorists are sometimes impatient with our friends who may still be using some sluggish type of gasoline. Rio Grande's invitation to you is sincere, logical, and true. Any oil man will tell you that cracking is the most modern, scientific method of refining the highest grade of gasoline. The finest cracking process in the world is used by the Sinclair Refining Company, the world's largest independent oil company. In the West, only Rio Grande cracked gasoline can be refined by this process, and as proof that Rio Grande crack is recognized as a faster accelerating, longer mileage, more powerful gasoline, we present the fact that more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and emergency equipment are powered by Rio Grande cracked gasoline wherever it is sold than any other brand. We call this police car performance, for that's exactly what it is, and that's exactly what you'll get if you will kindly accept our invitation to see your Rio Grande dealer tomorrow. Once more, it is our pleasure to present Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. Bret Hart once said, for tricks that are dark and ways that are vain, the heathen Chinese is peculiar. In my years as a peace officer, this has not been my experience. I have found that the Oriental view of justice has not always coincided with the Occidental view. But in the main, I have found Chinese people to be upright and respectable citizens. Probably no white man will ever fully understand the vast importance which pride or faith has for the average Oriental. But this true story of Los Angeles Chinatown may possibly add a little to our appreciation of its importance to this race from the land of lotus flowers. But your program is waiting. I'll have a few highlights for you at the end of the broadcast. When a man lives in a land that was old, when our own era began, that man takes into himself all the mystery and tradition of that land. He feels instinctively the press of years, the insignificance of his own stature against the panorama of generations before him. He does not quickly throw off the yoke of tradition and seek things afar off and unknown, but sometimes the lot of such a man is not an easy one. The weight of circumstances becomes an inexorable force which drives him toward far horizons. To Louis Garchon, sitting beside his beautiful young wife in the garden of his father, such a time has come. He looks for the last time at the great yellow moon rising out of the waters of the Yangtze. Soon I will see this garden no more. The moon that comes so silently as a great new dragon to light the sky will shine on both of us. But I will not be here beside you. It was not good that Louis Garchon so soon leave the garden of his ancestors. It is not the garden of my ancestors which I saw to leave. It is you. The time will be short. Then I will come to you. No more than four seasons shall pass before I will be 
the great merchant in America. Then we will have our own garden. We will watch the yellow moon rise from our own plum orchard. Yet the soul, for you have said it. It is spring now. And the plum blossoms like their soft cheeks are touched with pain. Soon the fruit will be lush and ripe. When the first plum falls, the leaden feet of messengers shall bring you news. I will write your name on my hand palms. Then everything I touch will be yours. No man can foresee his battleground. Every shadow may bring him peril. You will take care? When I reach America, I will seek the house of my kinsmen. Do you think Louis San Nam will welcome you? I do not believe he has become the wicked man as we are told. He who forsakes the sacred name of his ancestors must be a wicked and an evil man. Is Louis San Nam so wicked then because men now call him Louis Fu? That alone is not all. I fear Louis San Nam. Is it not because your worthy father refused when my kinsman wished to marry you? He who rids his house of an evil had better suffer the evil than tell the world. Oh, Lotus Flower, do not be sad tonight. Before the leaves fall from the plum trees, I will send for you. You shall come to my garden. Then you will be happy. The gods of mercy and of love will hold your hand. But things did not go as Louis Garchon pictured them that night under the yellow Chinese moon shining over the garden by the Yangtze. The months went by. The plum trees bloomed again in the garden of Chun's ancestors. The months became years. The laws of the new land would not let Toy come to America. The fifth new year comes and goes, and with it goes the soul of Louis Toy. In a gambling den in Chinese Alley, we find Louis San Nam, known to his associates as Louis Fook. Man, you don't seem to be playing so well tonight, Fook. What's the matter? Nothing is the matter with me. Watch your own hand. Okay, chum. That's how you feel. Yes, that is how I feel. Up to. I will see it. Give me three. And I will take two. Three jacks. Three queens. Yes, that cleans me. And it makes you owe me exactly ten bucks. I haven't got it. I will give you my IOU. That's no good here, Fook. I told you that before. But I haven't that much money. You will have to give me time to raise it. Now listen, I happen to know you had enough this morning to buy junk with. And I'm telling you, you'd better get that ten bucks and get it quick. I will have it inside of an hour. You'll be mighty sure you do, Fook. I'm getting fed up with you birds playing this joint for a sucker. Now get going and get back here with that dough. Don't get so tough about it, fellow. I will get your money. I'll tell a cockeyed world you will. If you don't, you would better be scarce around the alley. Ah, uh, you talk too much. It is dark in here. Why do you not light up this place? The light costs too much money. I am saving it. What for? You cannot send for toy now, you know. Yes, I do know. Oh. I am sorry I spoke that way soon. You know, I love toy too. I know. Um, I am in a spot. I do not believe I understand. I am in a jam. I need help. There'll be a pleasure to help, Kinsman. Swell. <laughs> I mean, it shall be a pleasure for me, too. What is your need of me? I need money. It is a matter of faith. Is it honest, Jeff? What has that got to do with it? Why, nothing, I suppose. I owe $10 to a friend of mine. A debt of honor. Gambling? Yes. I have no money for gambling. You will not help me? I will help you. But I have no money to pay gambling debt. Well, 
Let me have ten dollars. I will pay you back. I have not that much in the store. You haven't ten dollars in this place? Only a few moments ago, men brought goods which I had ordered. I needed all I had to pay for them. Well, how much have you? I have only five dollars. Well, let me take that. Five dollars will help. Maybe I can stall them for the rest. You are welcome to what I have. Hmm. Things are getting pretty bad when the fellow's own cousin will hold out on him. I am not, as you say, holding out on you. I have given you all that I have in my store. Would you have me borrow for you? That would not be a bad idea. It is an evil idea. I shall not borrow for you. What's wrong with you? For five years, I have been a member of this community. I am known and have the confidence of my fellow countrymen. You have not. Hello. So now you are taking to preaching, eh? There's no gratitude, girl, in your heart. Gratitude? Gratitude for what? A measly five dollars? Ha! Do not make me laugh. Abundance, like want, ruins many. You, you and your philosophy. I'm getting fed up with it. I shall repay this loan exactly one month from today, son. With interest. <laughs> On the night of July 24th, 1934, Chief of Police James E. Davis and a party of friends were enjoying dinner at a Chinese restaurant on Marchesto Street. I remember a very interesting case. It was back in 1927, just after I'd been made chief of the department. This particular criminal was a petty thief, a pickpocket. He tried to get into narcotic smuggling, wanted to become a big shot, and uh, it was about the... Oh, that's next door. Excuse me, but I'll have to get on the job. I'll be back as soon as I find out the trouble. I one side, you one side. Why? Oh, your pardon, Chief. I didn't recognize you. Oh, that's all right, Henderson. I guess I did just about fill up this little door then. What happened? That's what I've been trying to find out. I heard the shooting and ran down here, but the murderer had walked out. Man dead yet? Not quite. All right, boys. Be careful. That's it. All right, you people. Clear the way there. Looks like he's a bit shot up. Yes, I counted five wounds myself. Heard six shots, though. Well, we can lie. One miss out of six. See the gun anywhere? It's on the floor, just under the edge of the bed. The murderer evidently threw it into the room after he shot the man. Any witnesses? Are these fellows here? Get the names on this card. They apparently saw the whole thing. It looks like most of them are related. What was the victim's name? I gathered from a remark made by Yen Toy here that his name was Louis Garchun. Oh, yeah, yes, I've heard of him. Known all over Chinatown for his philanthropy. Yen Toy said he was the number one boss man. That's about tops in Chinatown. Yes. I'm wondering about something, Sanderson. What's that, Chief? Have you ever seen so many young Chinese around the scene of a murder before? Oh, now that you mention it, that it is odd, isn't it? Yes. Usually all you find around a place like this is a lot of old men. i just try to get one of them to smoke. No, I think you've got your answer in that number one boss man, Chief. You're probably right. Uh, who's on the case with him? Well, practically everybody in the homicide detail, including Joe Filker. Mm. Filker seems to be having a fine time out there interviewing Chinese. Here he comes. Get set. Good evening, Chief. Hi, Sandy. Why the greeting? Came over in the same car, didn't you? That's right, we did. Hey, I got a small list of witnesses here. What have you found out? Well, it seems that one, Louis Fook, a cousin of the deceased. Oh, so he's dead, huh? Got a yeah. report on that, too? Yes, sir. Caught it on the radio a minute ago. Uh, what about this Louis Fook? Louis Fook, on or about the 24th day of last month, June, attempted to borrow the sum of $10 from Louis Garchun. The deceased? Yeah. It also seems that Louis Garchun, having only five bucks at the time, gave the cousin that amount and told him to be on his way. Which caused Fook much mental anguish, no doubt. Right. He suffered much lost faith. So he came in and shot Louis Garchun. Yes, sir. How'd you know? I gathered as much from the conversation of our star witness, Louis Yen Toy, the gentleman standing behind you. Toy, this is Lieutenant Filkers of the homicide detail. Aye. Ah. This illiterate person is honored. May the gods help you to swiftly bring to justice the murderer of Louis Carchon. Uh, your expression of goodwill and cooperation have quite overwhelmed the honorable police officer. <laughs> yeah, you say, uh, uh, Louis Fook uh, did this uh, deliberately. Uh, quite deliberately. We are old men. We come often to the shop of Louis Garchung. 
He is only a few years in this country. He bears many tales of good news of our native land. Son, his men greatly respected by our people. No man has ought to say in an evil way of Louis Garchunt. Louis Folk is number one bad man. Well, suppose we try to find out what happened to him. Again? Where were you when this occurred? I sat by the door there. Uh, did you see Louis Folk come in? I saw him. Well, what did he do? He come to door. No word was spoken. Chun rose and ran to room. Here. Louis San Nam followed him. Louis San Nam shot Chun many times. Then he went away. Oh, uh, yes. Is that what you saw? These never far seeing enough eyes witness these things. Hmm. Aside from this loan business, did Louis San Nam have any other motive that you know of? The wise ones have said love and jealousy were born on the same day. The road is short. That leads from fear to hate. Say, what is this, a murder investigation or a recital? What's the matter, Joe? Are you out of your debt? Heck no, but... It this... is wise to take action now. Only the fool rests while the thief is still uncaught. Well, this is hardly a thief arrestor. But after all, only a fool rests. Well, let's get back to headquarters, boys. We'll come Chinatown tonight for Louis Hook. Hop, dog. Quick, Sandy, the needle. <laughs> Chinatown. I want to send your men into every place where Louis Fook might hang out. Okay, Chief. I have a list here of addresses where Fook's most likely to visit. It's another evidence of the willingness of the Chinese to bring this man to justice. Given to us by two Chinese girls, acquaintances of Fook. Quite an array of them, isn't it? Eighteen in all. Now, Wallace, I want you to put Lieutenant Littlejohn here in charge of one group. All right. Give Sanderson and Chilkis one group. Yeah. Brown and Casey can work with still another group. You know, start in at one end of Chinatown. Use this list for all it's worth. I want Louis Fook. <laughs> Followed hours of feverish activity. House after house was raided. Every address on Chief Davis' list was checked. Silk is Scotland Yard. Coming in, my lad. Open up, open up. Okay, get him up. But there's some light here. Mother of Moses, did you ever see so many guys in one room? Your oriental contacts are rusty, Joe. This is only a small family group. 15, 16, 17, 18. He got you. Can't get 18 people into this jump. Well, you missed one, Joe. Look under that packing box there. Uh oh. Oh, sleeping in the lower, huh? Come on, get out of there. Come on. Oh, I'm there. Come on. Uh, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Now listen, monkeys. Listen. We're looking for Louis Fuchs, Abby. You catch him, Louis Fook? No, I'll catch him. No, uh, Louis Fook, no, catch him in this place. No see Louis Fook. Two or three days. You know him? Oh, 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 yes. Me know him. No see. Two or three days. Come on, Sandy. Let's scram. We'll knock over the next dump. Louis Fuchs. 
You know where the other guy hangs out? No, but I know he's supposed to go to a meeting of this Pong Bunch tonight over on Los Angeles Street. Okay, we'll pick him up later. Any pictures of Louis Fuchs? Sure. Show up in his room. Why don't you go up and look at him? That's an idea. Let's go, Sandy. <laughs> Headquarters. Might as well park here till they come out. Yeah, which may be any time between now and daylight. Wonder what this meeting's for. Oh, well, probably discussing the murder and the fate of the murderer. But Gar Chun wasn't a Tong member. Ah, but Louis Fook was. Chinese feel pretty sore about this thing. So unjustified. Gar Chun was a number one boss man, all right. Hey, look, come some guys out of Tong headquarters. How are we going to find Louis Tong and that mob? Hey, wait a minute. Here comes an old Chinese. I'll see if he knows anything. Uh... Does this unimportant detective dare hope that the Honorable Ancient One knows Louis Tong? It is truly written, there is small choice in rotten fruit. The insignificant person now coming from the room of the Honorable Society is the man you see. Who? What the... Shut up and let's grab him. Who is that guy? I don't know, but he suddenly put the finger on Louis Tong. Hey, you. For me? Yes, you. I'd like to talk to you. Oh, me, number one fine boy. Me no do anything. What do you mean, you no do anything? Now listen, Tong, cut out the laundry talk. You happen to know you're able to speak English, all right? Now, come on, get in the car. We'll talk while we ride. Okay, Joe, let's go. Now, listen, Tong, we aren't trying to pin anything on you. We're not arresting you. We want you to help us. Where's Louis Fuchs? I do not know. Don't hand us that. We know you were with him at 9 o'clock this evening. Now, where is he? I do not know. It is true I was with him at 9 o'clock tonight. I have not seen him since I uh, left the house where we live. Did he have a gun when you saw him tonight? Yes, uh, he had a gun. What kind? I was uh, 38, uh, Smith and Wessel. How do you know? He showed it to me. Did he tell you he was going to shoot anybody? He did not tell me. When did you leave him? I left him on Main Street at 9.30. How did you know what time it was? I look at the clock on newspaper building tower. Louis Fuchs say he would meet me again at 11 o'clock. Did he meet you? No. Uh, where did you go to the Tong headquarters tonight? Uh, they, our leaders, uh, they sent for me. Why? Uh, to ask me what you have asked me. Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Tomorrow morning you will learn what the Tongs will do. Next morning, before a drab, shabby building in the heart of Los Angeles, Chinatown, Chief of Police Davis, Captain Wallace, and officers of the Homicide Squad gathered for a few hurried words before climbing the creaking stairs to the headquarters of the Bing Kong Tong. Inside, they found themselves in a scene of almost indescribable splendor. Rich tapestries covered the ugliness of the walls. A sure of exquisite beauty and luxury gave to the room an air of old China. America, with its hustle and hurry, had ceased to exist. Here were the leaders of a race of exiles assembled to decide the fate of one of their own members. Apart, but still part of the group, were the leaders of the powerful Hip Sing Tong. Two distinct factions held them in accord, but now united in a common cause. The avenging of an unjust murder. The murder of a man who was not a member of either Tong. At last, the president of the Bing Kong Tong spoke. <laughs> It is truly said, silence is a true friend who never betrays. It has also been written that the flower of success can bloom only in a contented heart. No person among our people can have a contented heart while freedom still clasps to her bosom one who has so unjustly slain his friend. May this humble person request that the illustrious officer make known his wishes to this unworthy group? I deeply appreciate the honor you've shown in asking me to come to this meeting. Let me assure you that no member of your tongs is under suspicion except Louis San Nam. He is the man we want. If there is here one who knows where Louis San Nam hides, let him speak. Louis San Nam is not in this city. Will the president ask this worthy member the source of his information? How do you know this? One of the members of our honorable society has helped him to escape. A fraud is not perfect unless it is practiced on clever and cunning persons. We are not clever and cunning persons, so the fraud is not perfect. The unloyal ones 
will not go unpunished. It is with sorrow, honorable officer, that I convey to you the news that one of our people has betrayed us. It is given to me to say also that our people offer a reward for the capture of Louis San Nam. There followed weeks and months of fruitless search through every Chinatown in America. Then, one morning, several months later... Lieutenant Pilkerson, Sanders, and the Seals, eh? Oh, send them in. Yes, sir. This way, gentlemen. Oh, come in, boys. Sit down. Right, Chief. Right. Well, what's on your mind? Well, we traced Louis Fook up the coast, sir. And he dropped out of sight in Portland. I got a wire from Texas this morning. I'll read it to you. Have information. The Chinese who hanged himself near Corn City in order to avoid arrest is Louis Fook, wanted for murder in Los Angeles. Advised disposition of body. Couldn't take it, huh? How'd the Texas boys find out about it? They were on their way to pick him up on our request. It was his attempt to save his face. How'd you find out uh, Fook was in Texas? Oh, we have means. You know what Bret Hart said? For tricks that are dark and ways that are vain. I know. The heathen Chinese is peculiar. <laughs> Subsequent investigation led to sending an officer to Texas to exhume and identify the body of Louis San Nam, known to the underworld of Chinatown as Louis Fu. The Sinclair refining processes that are responsible for the quality of Rio Grande cracked gasoline are also responsible for the quality of Sinclair motor oils. There are many reasons for you to use these internationally famous oils, but the one most important reason right now is this. Sinclair oils contain no petroleum jelly. That's a useful product in your household, but a bad one in your motor. Most oils do contain this harmful ingredient, and you know what happens to it when it gets hot. It melts and breaks down to a watery substance. Sinclair oils will not break down in the most intense summer heat, and that's one reason alone why eight major airlines, 150 railroads, great fleets of ships and motors of 45 nations of the world depend upon Sinclair oils to protect their billions of dollars' worth of motor equipment. You'll add months or years to the life of your car, and you'll save money with Sinclair Motor Oil. If you didn't get your free copy of the June issue of Calling All Cars News this last week, that's a third good reason for seeing your Rio Grande dealer tomorrow. Sinclair eyes for safety with Sinclair Motor Oils, and get police car performance with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. And now, Chief Davis has a word for you. One of the most interesting phases of this case we have not mentioned. The family of Louis San Nam, or Louis Fook cooperated with the Chinese Chamber of Commerce and with the Tongs to distribute pictures and descriptions of Louis Fook to every Chinatown in America. Thus it was that his movements were soon known throughout this country. He could not associate with his countrymen nor with Americans. He was indeed a marked man, a man who had lost his face. Attention all cars, the cancellation broadcast 185. This case is now closed. That's all. Rolls and quits. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsay, bidding you good night for Rio Grande, 